Welcome back Kiari Warriors. This is my sixth month anniversary since I had my Kiari decompression surgery. Uh, Kiari malformation type one. A couple things that I wanted to talk about in this video. Some things that I had been asked and some things I'd seen on the message board. The first being how long can you expect to feel tired or how long can you expect the tiredness to last. And second, what do you do if your family doesn't support you or wants to use scare tactics to keep you from pursuing surgery or looking at it, you know, from an objective standpoint? Um, I'll tackle the first one, the, um, the exhaustion. You're going to be tired when you go back. Um, my first couple weeks, I did a lot of sleeping. Took medicine, tried to stay awake, tried to do some walking around and you would just, I'd just be so tired and I just didn't feel comfortable sleeping in the chair. I had a, a nice, you know, Tempur-Pedic pillow and that was, that was working for me, you know, so I could sleep on my side and, you know, it wouldn't, you know, you know, the pillow, if I happened to roll over, it didn't, you know, tend to wake me up. So I was doing a lot of sleeping and when you sleep is when your body is able to make more recovery or help when you sleep is when your body can recover the easiest I guess is what I want to try to say you know your body can recover while you're sleeping so that's why they say it's good to get eight hours of sleep a night um, so basically I was tired the first couple weeks and then two months after my surgery almost you know two months to the day I went back to work because that was the earliest that my job would let me come back my doctor had cleared me about week six, week seven, but I had, you know, I had to wait another, you know, till almost two months before I could go back. And just after walking around, I was only there for maybe like, you know, half a day. And, you know, I went up and down stairs once and I was like, okay, we're not going to do that anymore. So I took the elevator, but just walking around and, you know, you know, turning things in and getting, you know, checklists signed off, people initialing this. I mean, I was tired after doing that. Normally, you know, I would, you know, after I get out off of work, I'd stop by the gym and, you know, spend, you know, 45 minutes to an hour there. I had no desire to do that. I mean, I just wanted to come back and sit down and normally would lean back in my recliner and, you know, sleep for like, you know, 45 minutes to an hour. Um, that has gotten better. Um, I'm not as tired. So as each week goes on, I find myself, um, being able to do a little bit more. Um, I have been uh, leaning on you know, five hour energy shots, um, you know, to get me through some days when I'm just really exhausted. That might, you know, some, you know say what you want to about those things. Um, you know, I like them and they don't tend to cause me any issues um, taking them, but um, those have been kind of helpful. But, you know, I, I've noticed that I, some days I, I need one of those and other days I don't. But as the time has gone on, I've gradually become less and less tired. But I still, when I get off work, I really don't want to go to the gym. But I know that if I don't get back to the gym and do at least something like, you know, 20 minutes on the treadmill and then leave, at least I'm there doing something. So I would say try to push yourself, but don't push yourself to the point where you're going to, you know, do yourself, you know, you know harm or yourself to where you're so exhausted that you're driving back home and you know you you know you just you know don't get yourself exhausted where you get like in an accident or something like that but it has taken a while to build up to where you know I, I'm, I'm not as tired as I was when I was able to finally you know move all my stuff out of my garage back into my new classroom those days were really long and those days were really hard because I was lifting stuff you know you know, not lifting heavy things, but I was, you know, putting boxes on a two-wheeler and, you know, pushing it into the school. And, you know, that's a lot after you've had this surgery. If you haven't had this surgery, watch some of my previous videos. Look how big the scar, you know, the incision was on the back of your head. It's a major surgery, so you're going to be tired. It will get better. You will get more um, energy. You will get, uh, you won't be as exhausted, but there's still some days I come home and I'm just... And, um, and I'm not walking nearly the steps I was before I had surgery. I mean, before I had surgery, I would do 13,000 to 15,000 steps at the school. And then I would go to the gym and I'd spend 45 minutes to an hour at the gym. 
now at my new school um, it's not I don't have to walk as far to take the students to lunch or to go to resource so average day I'm probably getting only 8,000 steps and then I go to the gym and I'm just exhausted as soon as I walk in the door so I try to make myself do as much as I can without pushing myself you know beyond beyond a comfortable limit so but I've been able to go to the gym five days a week not maybe spending as much time as I normally would but I'm gradually have been able to to step it out with you know basically have longer sessions at the gym for lack of a better word of saying it so you're gonna be tired that's gonna happen you're gonna be exhausted but it does get better it just takes time now depending on how old you are um, that will also play into this okay I'm over 50 so you know I knew coming into this that it was going to be a little bit longer on the recovery time and they say in order between four to six weeks well I was you know past the six week part or six week point before I was cleared by my doctor to go back to work because it took that long before I could look over both shoulders so your age is gonna have something to do with it too I want to try to keep this video short so the second point I wanted to talk about is I saw somebody on the message board say how would I deal or not me specifically but how do you deal with family that's not supportive and families or family members that want to use scare tactics to keep you from having the surgery I would first say that hopefully your, your family wouldn't do that but if that is the case and they don't want you to have the surgery they're welcome to have their opinion and I would say you're welcome to have your opinion but this is my this is my life this is my head and if you're having 15 to you know 10 to 15 dizzy spells a day you're having headaches where you just you know wish you could just like you know I would just bury my head into my pillow and just you know just just I, you know it was just unbearable you know but I didn't you know you know I was trying to you know just you know you do almost anything take almost anything to try you know to to get rid of the headaches decompression surgery might be the right thing for you um, until they've had the headaches and until they've had the dizzy spells and they end up on the floor from a dizzy spell I don't really think they have much rhyme or reason to try to tell you that you know you shouldn't have the surgery could complications occur yes could things happen yes but any surgery you could have that happen okay I mean my incision became infected that happens 3% of the time went in and you know when I noticed it the night that you know I noticed it one night the next morning five o'clock they're taking me in they're you know cleaning it all out and I was back home that same day um, you know so you just got to do your research um, have a list of questions that you want to ask the doctor have that written out so when you walk in there because that'll show the doctor that you've actually thought this out because our, our, I've heard some people have doctors that you know I don't want to get into it it'll be a whole other 10 minutes on this video but there's some doctors out there that aren't very knowledgeable about carry hopefully you're going to a specialist um, I went to the Mayo Clinic and um, my doctor he is just amazing if you're wanting to, know, wanting to know who he is you can drop a you know drop something down in the comments and I can I can give you his link and you can you can check him out for you for yourself but um, I checked him out and I was impressed with him and I met with him and really liked him so we met him with him initially and then when he offered us the surgery, you know, we had our list of questions, we asked our questions, and we decided to go ahead, you know, and go with it, you know. You know, my wife and I decided, you know, that there could be complications with any surgery, but that this had a, a better than 50-50 chance of helping me, and it has so far. Um, but I'm only at the six-month mark, so um, the dizzy spells have, are almost non-existent. <laughs> As would happen, I had one today. Um, I honestly cannot remember the last time I had one. I think I've had maybe a total of like four or five since June 1st. So that's much better than when you consider I was having 10 to 15 a day. So I would just, you know, respect you, take the high road with your family members that are, you know, using the scare tactics and, you know, say, well, I respect your opinion, and but I'm going to go ahead and do what I feel is right for me. So with that being said, I don't want this video to be a marathon video. So if you like the video, please hit the like button. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. Subscriptions would help me out. If you have any questions or comments, put them in the comment section. I have a lot of people that ask questions about 
their situation. Sometimes I make a video on it. Um, I usually try to answer them right away. So if you would, put those in the comment section. Please share this video with your friends out there and fellow warriors. And until next time, uh, take care and be safe. See ya.